Okay. Uh, I made a dev tool that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, a little bit about me first. My name is Vlad. Uh, I'm a citizen of Russia and resident of Sweden. Uh, and I'm, I consider myself lucky to be able to show you the picture of the exact moment when REPL driven development clicked for me. Because uh, from this moment, I was able to see the truth. <laughs> um, because I think the truth uh, is in the runtime, not in the compile time. Uh, and REPL uh, is this window to the process you're developing in uh, that allows me to see it. So I love REPLs. Um, I don't, I won't spend time uh, explaining what REPL is because we had yesterday a wonderful talk by Oliver about this, but uh, a little bit of context. I love that REPL provides an instant feedback loop uh, for how my program behaves. I also like that it allows me to compose uh, different tools at hand, like when I need them, uh, to give more meaningful insights. For example, when we are talking about profiling, uh, or we are talking about performance, there are like two axes to it. One is uh, is a execution time measurement, and the other is uh, profiling in terms in terms of where the time is spent. And there are separate tools for both of those axes. Uh, and REPL allows to combine them together effortlessly. So here you can see that uh, uh, I am using uh, a profiler to validate that merge is actually faster than into on a small maps. Uh, and at the same time, I'm able to use profiler to, to see where exactly the time is spent so I can understand why it's faster uh, on extremely small uh, maps because it creates transients and it, this is like a non, it's not free to create transients uh, on a small data structures. Um, another thing that is great to, uh, in REPLs, which is not very, very great in the UIs is um, ability to, to run arbitrary code uh, that is, uh, what you want to use uh, like in your program. Uh, for example, you can see that I use Eclipse Memory Analyzer to analyze heap dumps. Uh, and it might show me that I have a memory problem for a particular byte array. But this memory analyzer is not aware of a Fresian serializer. So it, it isn't able to to deserialize it for me and show me what what is the actual value uh, that is there. Uh, I can only see bytes. But I think there are still some problems with the REPLs. Uh, one is that in like in real world uh, work, uh, I very often deal with huge data structures. They are uh, extremely big, and I think. Uh, pretty printing is not really good enough uh, for this cause because uh, if I pretty print this large data structure and I uh, expect it with my eyes and see oh uh, this particular piece I want to know what is uh, uh, what is the metadata metadata of this uh, this vector I can't see it uh, because now I have to get access to it in the REPL by using get ins in this large, large data structure just to reach it. Another problem with uh, REPLs, I think, is that its textual nature is not rich enough to provide uh, meaningful insights into data. For example, you can see that there are two functions, foo and bar, that both return closure.plang.ratio. But uh, at the same time, those are different things that are, they are not equal. Can you guess uh, what's the difference? We'll get to it in a, in a minute. So uh, my tool reveal is not the first one is this area. There is also a rebel. So I want to, first I want to discuss a bit uh, the differences between reveal and rebel as uh, those are like the main uh, inspectors uh, known currently. Uh, so 
Rebel is also a visual tool uh, that uses two protocols, the Tafai and NAV, uh, in the uh, as like a main engine for inspecting and navigating data. And I think there are problems with it. There are two problems. First is a Datafy. Um, Datafy converts object, any object that you have into in your VM into data. And that includes transforming atoms into data. But atoms are not single element vectors. They are atoms. So this datafication makes sense when we are dealing uh, with network, for example, because uh, you can't really send objects over network, only bytes. So you have to serialize it to some kind of data structure. But if you are talking about REPL-driven development, the development usually happens on the same machine that you're using. So there is no need for networking. So there is no need for uh, converting your objects to something else. So if REPL is a window to running pro program, then the DAFI is a murky glass that obscures uh, what you see, uh, obscures uh, the object that exists in, in your program and shows you something else. The other problem with DataFi and NAV based tooling is that DataFi and NAV are protocols. And that means that for any particular piece of data or type of data, there is only one representation. So if you DataFi a string class, you might have uh, its reflection information. But since Java 9, there's also a model information that isn't there. And if I want to edit, I have to override uh, uh, to provide my override this definition and to provide my own uh, extension for this protocol. And in the meantime, I will be losing this. And usually when I'm inspecting things, I want to be able to see them from different angles. So I thought this isn't uh, good enough and I decided to do something about it. And I did review. Uh, reveal is a, in the simplest form, it's a output panel for your REPL. Uh, here you can see, by the way, what's the difference between foo and bar. One returns class and the other returns symbol. And in the reveal, you immediately see that those are different things. So what's reveal is about? Uh, reveal is only about printing. Uh, that means that it's only about re replacing the print with visualizing. And in its simplest form, reveal is just a window uh, uh, that you can submit your values to for inspection. And uh, on top of that, you can build and reveal provides in its default distribution uh, various REPLs, but you, you also will be able to build your own. So in his, in his default distribution, Reveal has socket REPL, REPL, and NREPL middleware. Uh, and those are very thin wrappers on top of uh, like the underlying window. Another approach that Reveal takes for visualization is that it is, uh, by default, it is like text. Because text is visual and very dense, for example, here you can see that uh, a little snippet of code on the left encodes the exact same information that uh, the Luna Lang um, picture encodes on the right. Uh, but it does so in taking much fewer space uh, with much bigger font size. And I think this is important because uh, our ability to see more at the same moment uh, allows us to understand things better. Another benefit to output being text is that it's universal. You can select it, copy it, and save it into a file or send it on Slack. Um, this output uh, window, it exists in the process you're developing in. And that means it's not tied to any ID or text editor whatsoever. It means that it is already available today in every um, text editor that is able to send forms to REPL. And I think uh, it might benefit the ecosystem because it will uh, allow 
IDE offers to focus on stellar uh, text editing and uh, linting and other uh, related tasks while uh, not having to bear the burden of creating uh, wonderful output inspectors. Another benefit of Reveal being in process is that the reference to objects are at hand. And that means that the output that is in that window, it's, it's not just text. Uh, this text has references to values that produce the text. And that means you can uh, select any object, like select any piece of text and uh, get access to that object that produced it and do something with it. Um, reveal treats your objects precious. Uh, when Datafy and Nav-based toolings will uh, pretend that vars are single element vectors, Reveal will show them as vars. And that is also true of, for metadata. Uh, your metadata is left as is. Uh, like it is in in Datafy, but I think uh, annotations are useful, and that's why Reveal allows you to put annotations uh, on printed objects alongside those objects, and that means that you can annotate any objects, uh, not only the ones who implement iMeta interface. So here you can see that uh, I printed a keyword, but it is a keyword in the context of a graph. So I am able to see its uh, related nodes, like the one that are connected to this node. Uh, another uh, approach of reveal is that inspections are an open set. So you don't have to override it with something else, uh, like with your code. Uh, you just add more. And uh, this open set includes arbitrary code that you can just evaluate on selected values. Um, it is an open set that you can extend to your own domain. Here, for example, uh, you might be developing a server like uh, for an online chess game and you're storing the current state of the game in Atom. So you can create your own uh, visualization using simple functions uh, that take data in and return data out uh, that shows your state as a set of chessboards. And it can be easily done reactive uh, using the same functions that re return data structures. Here I'm mutating the state and the viewer dates automatically. And another important part is that the view is not a leaf. This picture was produced from data just because it's shown in a different way. It doesn't mean that uh, you have to lose access to your data. You can go back to data and then keep exploring. Read a while visualized loop. So um, a couple more features I want to talk about uh, because I think this is very beneficial. Uh, the number one is TAP. Uh, TAP is a recent addition to Clojure, uh, which is uh, I use as a replacement of print. So uh, if you are using the real, you don't need to print anymore and, and you shouldn't do it because printing is about converting data to text. And that, that is lossy because you're now just have only text and not the data. TAP on the other hand is a way to uh to debug information as values themselves so when you tap something instead of printing a uh, real is able to uh, access the top values as data and expect them further and one of the built-in inspections is java beans because we are dealing with objects in the vm and that means uh that sometimes, and especially if we are dealing with interop and some objects that come from Java, we might want 
to be able to have a look uh, inside of them and see what is there. And so using your view, you automatically get a powerful IDE-like uh, object inspector. Reveal is most useful when it's used uh, for developing like in the same process, but it doesn't mean that it's limited to to being uh, only like an in-process tool. Here you can see that I'm running a Clover script uh, peripheral server on port 5555, and I can configure my IDE to use Reveal to go uh, to that port and evaluate forms there and then print the output in in, in this window. There is a difference uh, is that using remoting you are limited to inspecting only the data that is uh, that you received from the network but not the data not the objects that exist in the target VM. But it is useful nonetheless because Reveal provides uh, various visualization tool, tools that work just on data. For example, just by having your data in a proper shape for a chart, Reveal can show it as a chart. And again, the view is not leaf. Uh, you can select any particular data point on a chart and get back to data. It also can show uh, data structures as tables. Uh, which is very useful if you have huge data structures that you want to inspect layer by layer. So you can uh, sort of squish, squish them in a, a single lines and navigate it in a more uh, visible way. Reveal is extensible uh, the, and it has like free um, areas for extensibility. The first is formatting, which uses a small DSL for specifying how to uh, format your objects. The second is actions, which is an open set um, uh, for evaluating code on, uh, on selected values. And this is basically just a, a function that uh, performs an arbitrary predicate on input on selected value and returns a function that will be called if you select this action. And the third extensibility me uh, mechanism is views. And then it uses the same actions, uh, but um, if you return, instead of a arbitrary piece of data, a CLJ fixed description uh, of a view, it will show it as, as a view. So CLJFX is a, a React-like uh, wrapper of JavaFX, which is a UI framework that Reveal is built on. Uh, and it uses simple maps to describe views. So uh, I'm going to give you a, like a, an example uh, of what can you do with Reveal. So you might come for a better inspector, but stay for the visual tools it gives you uh, that enhance your development. And here's an example. I might want to, I might have some uh, data source that is noisy and I want to present it to my users as something like more smooth. Uh, so I decide to do a rolling average. And I create the rolling average function. Um, uh, that by default it will just return uh, the data it received. Then I can use Reveal to create an observable view uh, that will watch this rolling average var because the function has a var which is observable uh, in Clojure. So, and this observable view works on any object that implements IRF, which are vars, atoms, refs, uh, something else. Uh, so all you need to do is just create a sim simple map that has a function in it uh, that shows another description of how the view should look like, which is also just data. 
So this is a starting point. We have our raw measurements and we have our uh, rolling average. Now we can start implementing it. So how do you do rolling average? You partition and then uh, every partition for every partition you do an average. So you do this and immediately as you evaluated the function that redefines rolling average, you see the results updated. And you see that, oh, of course, this is not rolling average uh, because we are not really rolling, it's sort of chomping. Uh, so you have to have a step of one to, for it to be rolling. So you add the step of one and Im immediately the view updates. And now you see that, oh, there are uh, fewer data points, uh, but it makes sense because if you, if you partition with a cer certain size, uh, your output will have fewer items in it that is related to this size. So you think a little bit and decide that maybe before the first value, I can assume that there were some like fake data points that are exactly the same as the first value. So you decide to add uh, some fake data points to uh, to compensate for this loss of because of a partition. And you can see that, oh, the view moved. We have an off by one error. Of course, we need to decrement it. Now, you might have thought of all of that uh, without the sort of, this sort of visualizations. But what you wouldn't caught here is that uh, this rolling average is lagging. In the raw data, uh, the the peak appears before, uh, then it appears on the uh, on our uh, ever like smooth data. So, what can you can we do now? Um, we might think that oh maybe instead of prepending a bunch of uh, fake data points before, we actually want to prepend like a half of data points before and a half of data points after. So we have to divide uh, these items, with the amount of the items we want to spread. But then you think if you divide, you might have, um, uh, you might have an, a non-integer numbers like uh, 2.5 or something. So you have to, um, around them and uh, we have to uh, for those items to add up we have to use a uh, floor in one place and seal in other but how can you possibly tell what is uh, what is fitting where uh, without seeing it like here you can see I, I'm switching between the slides that have different places for floor and seal I think this is the kind of stuff that Reveal uh, allows you to to see immediately and get a much faster feedback for what you're developing. So, in summary, I think if REPL is a window to a running pro program, then Reveal is a door, and you're welcome to come in. Uh, I get a lot of leverage from using it, and I hope you will find it useful too. So, check it out. Tell me what you think, and. Maybe if you find yourself using it every day, consider becoming my uh, GitHub sponsor. <laughs> Thank you.